Hello and welcome to another basic building block of code and today we're going to be looking at functions or more precisely we're going to be looking at an introduction to functions. So what exactly is this mystical thing called functions? Let's find out what it is. I start normally by looking at Wikipedia so I took a quick look at Wikipedia to say okay show me what a function is and it said well a function is something natural purpose or thing and going okay well that's that's nothing I want to look at so let's just forget that and uh, a thing dependent on other factors that's not it chemistry nope no, that's not there I ended up getting down magnetic fields not really to the mathematical description a relational expression involving one or more variables and it's, that's mathematics and that's fair enough but I kind of thought well actually I can explain functions using mathematics first and then show you how that would work with a computer so the easiest way to do with mathematics the calculator and in a calculator I could say for example find out x squared so I could type in a 3 in goes my 3 I would then press the x squared button the 3 itself would vanish and up on the screen would appear a 9 but okay well a calculator is a very simplified computer what's actually happening in the background there okay so what we're looking at is we have a function that function we're going to give it a name that name I'm going to call x squared now this function itself I needed somewhere to type in that 3 so I had to have a space for a value and I put that inside curved brackets so this function is called x squared and it has curved brackets and within there I typed in 3 okay. then what happens well the f it tries to deal with it and the way it deals with it is it's going to go okay I'm going to make a variable and we're going to call this say output and that's going to be equal to something times something so this is the mathematics bit and that something times something is going to be whatever we had above there it's kind of that free there it's going to go into both those boxes that make kind of sense so just type that in so here's my three and my three so it's three times three and that would be equal to nine so I could if I'd like in fact I'm going to make it a bit simpler I'm just going to then say equals nine okay you wouldn't normally see that but that's there and then finally what I'd need to do is I'd need to return that so in my function I would then say return that number send it back so we'd write return nine only we wouldn't actually say the return nine what we would say is return the output when programming it because this is a variable so we go return output okay. so what's happening is we're calling a function and we're saying that function is going to have a number that we've typed into it we're going to use that number in some way so like for example that number times itself and then we're going to take that and return it so that output was equal to nine obviously that wouldn't be there and it would return the output and I'd see that on the screen that's how a function works is it is a set of instructions that you can call to do another job now these are quite common in mathematics and you see them everywhere some common functions would be so the x squared um, you can invert something you could have square root in fact that's how quite often we write square root there is no keyboard in standard ASCII that does that so we actually do a shortened version we call that function sqrt square root uh, if you've got a list of numbers you could use min and max and it will give you back the minimum and the maximum uh, we could have the absolute value the, always the positive of course the distance uh, away from zero we could have sine cos tan thetas uh, 
pi we could also do. You can see pi down here. Now pi is an interesting one. Is pi, I don't need to type a number into pi. With square root, say I typed, I'd have to type in, say, 4, and it would return 2. Uh, ABS, say I typed in minus 6, and it would return 6. But with pi, I don't need to type anything in. So that particular function would just run without anything inside the bracket. So these are quite common functions that you would see all over the place. Now, I'm going to rush you a bit, because what I want to really do is explain exactly how computing deals with these functions. Now, there are some common rules. First thing is we normally need to tell our program that we're writing a function, we're making one. If we're going to do that, normally we say function, just to let it know it's a function. There is some slight syntax difference on different programs, but usually we just say function. We then have to give it a name. And that name could be things like square root, SQ United. Uh, now, immediately after the name, you have to have a curved bracket. Always. There's no space, you have the name, and then you have a standard curved bracket. And if you have data that wants to be imported, then you type that data in there. And the way we'll do that, we'll look at in more detail another time. But it will go inside that bracket. And then we close off with the closed curved bracket. Now, all functions will have that. They'll have an identifier when you write it to say this is a function. They will have the name of the function, which has to be a unique name. And without spaces, regardless of the language, you have a curved bracket and a closed curved bracket, and then something, if you wish to import data, then it will go in there. After that, we will have something to identify the beginning of the code. It may be squiggly brackets, it may be an indent, there may be a semicolon. There will be something that says, Okay, here is the part of the function itself. And then you'll have the main code. For example, if that was x, it would be x times x. Yep, it would be the main code. Now, if I want then to return the value, which most functions do, I would then at that point return the value if that's required. Once you return the value, the function closes itself down. It returns the value and that's it, it stops running. So you can actually have more than one return the value if there's different values depending on different conditions. Okay. And then finally, something to signify that you've got to the end of the code. And this is how every function looks. Now the key thing to remember about this is you are always going to have the curved brackets. You're always going to have to give it a unique name. You always have to identify the beginning of the code and the end of the code of the function as well as the code itself, of course, you would probably use something to return the value. So these are common rules for all functions, regardless of the software. All right. Here's an example. This one, we're doing function pi. So I've said this is a function. Here, I've given it a unique name. I don't need data, so I've just left it with the curve brackets. Even though I don't need the data, I still have to put them there. I've now had something to indicate this is the start of the code. In this case, I'm using curly brackets. I then have the main body of my code. Pi is actually quite an easy one, so, so you see I've just put a comment line in here, which is, doesn't hurt with functions. The, this function returns the value of pi. That's a useful comment line. And then I've got my return, where I am returning a physical value. Finally, I end to say... Here it is, we've ended it. That is a standard, typically, function that you might write. Okay. Here's another function, the absolute function. Remember that gives an absolute value. So here, what I'm doing is, again, I'm identifying to the computer, this is a function. I'm giving it a unique name, ABS. Curve bracket, no space, that's not a space there bracket straight away and then I'm actually saying okay here I'm declaring a variable that's value now how that would work in real terms so say for example when I call this function what I might do is something along the lines of print oops sorry print 
ABS. Well, let's do minus 6. Okay. So I may call the function elsewhere in the code like this. Is I've placed a minus 6 inside and I've called it. What will happen now is that this value here will become minus 6. That will become minus 6. That will become minus 6. Yep. Okay, I now have something to say. This is my code starting. Here I've got a quick way of getting a positive value is something times itself rooted will always give a positive. So that would now give me positive 6 here. And then I'm returning that value, which of course now would be a positive 6, not a negative. So we return a 6 there. End of the code. Doesn't. And up here, this whole lot there would vanish and would be replaced by the result, the return. And that's how that works. So you could almost think of that as declaring a variable. The other nice thing about this is that variable only exists within the function. So I can reuse it in other places if I want. Is as soon as we return the value, that word value as a variable ceases to exist in that state. Okay. So we have some rules to remember that all functions obey. First rule. A function must have a name. That name should be unique. Second rule, a function must have curve brackets. And those curve brackets must immediately follow the name with no space. So you must name it. It must be followed by curve brackets. The data passed into a function must be inside those curve brackets. Yep. That's another one. So if I'm going to pass any data into that function, it must be inside the curve brackets. Uh, when I open brackets, I must always close those brackets. So you don't just open one. As soon as the data's gone in, you close. Data passing out of a function should use the return command. You shouldn't, if you can help it, use global variables within the function. Next one. The code in the function is between some form of identifier that says this is where the code begins and this is where the code ends. And it may be an indent, it may be uh, brackets, it may be something as simple as saying begin function, end function. Okay. And those are the rules of functions. There should be a test to do on Google Classroom. Where you go.